how does Trump's ongoing talk about immigrants re-up the need uh, to make sure there's humanity in our immigration policies? Well, I think his comments need to be correctly as disgusting and repulsive as they are, Julian. I think they need to be addressed, and I think they do factor in. They cast a shadow over these negotiations. First of all, let's be clear. Donald Trump and his campaign team are clearly upping the ante on this rhetoric because they feel completely confident they're going to win the Republican nomination. So they want to be able to win that nomination on the mandate of this horrific talk. And if, God forbid, he is elected president, have those words, in essence, be uh, washed, so to speak, by the election and use that as a mandate to govern. What needs to be said most clearly, I believe, is that if Donald Trump were running for president for any other country outside of the United States now, or a president of another country outside the United States today, and use that language, the United States government would consider that person or that president an enemy of the United States. This mission of the Trump candidacy is to divide, it is to depress turnout, it is to do everything possible to then on day one begin the dictatorship that he himself has not once but twice said he intends to begin on day one. Well, and David, uh, you have Trump focused with very incendiary language on the issue of immigration. Uh, polling shows immigration and border security are among the top issues to Americans right now. Uh, how does that impact how aggressive Republicans are in the Senate border talks that are happening? Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting predicament for Republicans because they want immigration to be the issue next November. They, they feel like they do very well on it. Now, they do very well on it because they stoke xenophobia and racism. I mean, I think we have to call Donald Trump's comments, as you did, Julian, racist. Those are racist comments to suggest that immigrants poison the blood and the likes of, of Lindsey Graham and, frankly, Nikki Haley, who was born to immigrant parents, should be the first ones condemning it. Language does matter. And so where Donald Trump is praising Orban and Putin and suggesting that immigrants are poisoning white nationalism here in the United States, it must be called out, not just as reflective of hard right immigration border security policy, but also a cultural conversation around the front runner for the White House espousing racist policies. What does it mean for current negotiations on the border control policies? The interesting thing is if Republicans are successful in negotiating with Biden, they will then have to give Biden credit for helping fix border problem that Republicans have been, been asked for, and they will lose that issue next November, which is why I don't think Republicans ultimately come around to this. I think House Republicans stand in the way. And the question becomes, what do House Democrats really do with whatever the compromise is? It took House Democrats to do the CR, to do the debt limit, to do the defense bill. Will they be there on a border security compromise? I don't know that they will. I'm not sure the House votes are there for whatever comes out of the Senate. Yeah, you certainly have seen a lot of pushback from the Progressive Caucus of Dems and uh, Congressional Hispanic Caucus. Uh, Fernand, the Department of Homeland Security has warned that the policies, some of the policies under consideration would overwhelm our system and even make things worse. Uh, why can't leaders listen to those warnings and put forward solutions that will actually help? because the issue has become completely politicized. I mean, I don't think even the Democrats, even those progressive activists, those immigration activists, they wouldn't argue that there are issues and challenges at the border. But what I think they're doing correctly is saying, let's not give everything to what the MAGA caucus wants. Let's try and be a little bit more reasonable in an approach here. And as said earlier, let's not use the negotiations for the aid to Ukraine and Israel at the gunpoint of, of this immigration issue. But, you know, I think we kind of come back also to the facts at this point. 2023 is going to be one of the years where we had the lowest crime seen in a long, long time. So the idea that there is a correlation between immigration and crime is just flat out wrong based on the statistics. Also, what is driving this tremendous economic recovery that has been presided over and led by the Biden administration has been the very immigrant population and work, workforce pool that is pow super uh, powering and turbocharging the American economy right now. So you can't let the political components and residents on this issue drive the policy considerations that will then become law. And we'll certainly have to see whether uh, cooler heads prevail. 
David, uh, before we go, I have to ask you about a serious story out of the Florida Republican Party. Leaders uh, voting to strip authority from the party chairman accused of sexual assault. Uh, we want to point out that uh, while Christian Ziegler is, uh, Ziegler is under criminal investigation, he hasn't been charged uh, and he's denied wrongdoing. Uh, but what do you make of the steps the party is taking here? Well, they're the right steps. And I think we have to start with the fact that if the affidavit is proven true, that means there's a victim of sexual assault and rape. Christian Ziegler suggests that the affidavit is incorrect and he will be exonerated. And so the pleading that he made in front of the party's executive committee today was, I'm innocent, stick with me. But what the party executive committee did is they followed Governor Ron DeSantis, Rick Scott, Marco Rubio, and virtually every other leading Florida Republican to say Christian Ziegler stepped down as chairperson. He's refusing to do so. I think he's actually protecting some legal rights to probably sue the party when they ultimately dismiss him in January. The secondary question, question is his wife is a politician of her own sorts, having received a lot from the gravy train of Ron DeSantis. She's a school board member, now a district supervisor for Disney following the Don't Say Gay controversy. Does Christian Ziegler's wife also step down? Right now, that used to be power couple is saying they're not going anywhere.